So as was mentioned earlier, LabVIEW was probably the NI product that brought many of you here today. In fact, it was probably LabVIEW that made a lot of you aware of NI in the first place. But it's a more foundational innovation that enabled you and NI to get here. And that innovation was a very simple idea of connecting an instrument with a standard computer. From the moment our founders created the very first NIGPIB interface, we've been supporting engineers performing automated tests. From day one, you and I have been innovating the way in which automated tests can bring added functionality and added value to the product design cycle. In fact, at these NI conferences over the years, we've been able to witness the evolution of the tools used in automated functional tests change dramatically. And this year is no different. So with that, I'd like to kick, kick, kick off and talk about the latest innovations and your successes in this area. So I'd like to bring to the stage Ian Bell and Curtis Mystery. <laughs> John. Well, the best choice for improving performance and reducing the cost of automated test is PXI, a platform that we invented over 17 years ago. The simple idea of taking PC-based instruments, giving them a rugged form factor, and integrated timing and synchronization was the right idea at the right time, and it's still the right idea today. But the true measure of a platform isn't the past. PXI is just getting into its stride. Forecasts show that the PXI market is going to grow to over a billion dollars in the next few years, and it's growing faster than that of traditional instruments. So if you're about to build a test system, and you're not at least considering PXI, you're taking a very big risk with your test strategy. But why might that be? Well, PXI represents both disruptive innovation that's technologies like user programmable FPGAs, alongside mainstream user requirements such as traceable calibration and global support. And it's these two vectors of disruptive innovation and mainstream user requirements that we're going to look at in more detail today. Sounds great. So where do we start? Well, to get us started, let's take a look at production test. And let's see how analog devices have adopted this platform in their production facilities. So our customers have application in handset, wireless communication, and base station. Each of the area requires some level of dynamic performance. There are many standards, and to put all this together in one simple single part and test it is a significant task. NI's 26.5 gigahertz signal analyzer, I believe, has the RF performance we need for measuring the DAX performance. But also, it has the processing power that allows us to reduce the test time and so the cost of tests. When we did performance metrics between the 26.5 gig vector signal analyzer and our existing um, bench test equipment, um, we saw about a 30% savings and test time for a lot of the specs that we were testing. We can run more data in an eight-hour day than we could have with other equipment. So that's something that will, it should help us speed up our evaluation time. If you use the same hardware, if you use the same software, then you can develop characterization test program and leverage that characterization program for production test. And that is one way you minimize the development cost, and more important, time to market for us. This is where NI can bring a significant benefit to customer. So you saw how ADI created their own in-house semiconductor production test system to replace a traditional ATE. Using PXI, they saw massive reductions in size, cost, and footprint. And they're not alone we estimate that there are over 700 deployed semiconductor production test systems that use PXI. But building your own in-house test system is not a trivial task. It takes a team of engineers to build and support it, and not every manufacturer can afford that. What you need is a platform that's better integrated into the production environment. Now, you might be asking yourself, why now do we need that better level of integration? Well, the semiconductor world is in the midst of a major transition. 
What used to be driven by Moore's law, based on the growth of the PC industry, is now driven by more than more. It started with the proliferation of smart mobile devices. And as we heard from Eric earlier on, it's now being driven further by the, the advent of the Internet of Things, pushing analog sensors and wireless capabilities into almost every integrated circuit technology. And whilst the cost to manufacture these increasingly analog-centric devices has continued to fall, the cost of testing them has stubbornly remained the same. It's even increased. Traditional ATE works well for Moore's law, but its base capabilities don't scale well for the wireless and analog capabilities in this new generation of devices. So what's NI's role in changing this dynamic? Well, we are sitting on a massive portfolio of hardware and software IP that we've repeatedly shown making the most challenging measurements in the semiconductor world. The high bandwidth and low latency of PXI are ideal for high volume production tests, and LabVIEW and TestStand are perfect for code module development and test sequencing. Add to that, we have a global network of hundreds of application engineers to help you with services and support. What we hear as the number one request, however, is for a better capability to bring this to semiconductor production tests. So in that light, I'm really excited to introduce you all today to the new NI Semiconductor Production Test, Semiconductor Test System, or STS. So with the STS, we've brought the openness and flexibility of PXI to semiconductor production test. With features such as handler prober integration, spring probe device under test interfacing, data reporting, configuration management, and calibration, it's available in three different sizes for different pin and site count requirements. Well, I know there's at least one person in the audience right now who thinks that we've just developed a turnkey AT system. What, what would you say about that? Well, it's certain, certainly true with the introduction of the STS that we do now offer systems with a higher level of integration, but we have done it in our way. It's based on standard products, but it's open and customizable by the end user. We've created common interfaces that for uh, load board and test code development that let you, the end user, and our global net network of alliance partners do turnkey integration. It really is well aligned with our business model and our technology platform. Wow, so can you tell us how it came to be? Well, we certainly didn't create the STS in a vacuum. We worked with a number of lead users who advised us on the development of the system. Some of them even deployed early prototypes into their production facilities. And in one instance, we made a number of optimizations that improved throughput up to half a million devices per day for a single site tester. We've also worked with industry partners such as Reed Ashman and Sisu devices who helped us with some of the more complex parts of the system to help us get it right the first time. We've actually been thinking about this, uh, building a system like this for some years. Now, the semiconductor world is used to the concept of the RF port module. That's flexible RF instrumentation that's available to multiple pins on the interface board. We realized that we had the ideal building block in its low cost and small size, and that's the PXI vector signal transceiver. And with the addition of our new port module subsystem, We've expanded its capabilities up to 48 ports. With the use of multiple VSTs, we've now enabled really low cost, highly parallel RF tests for this next generation of devices. And it's also calibrated to the interface board level, which is crucial, cru crucial for traceability. In every way, the STS makes PXI ready for semiconductor production tests, and we've heard from many of these lead users that due to its cost and flexibility, they see the STS as a great opportunity to drive down that cost of test. Well, that's great. I'm looking forward to seeing how this platform-based approach will have an impact on the AT market. So as, any, as, as Ian just said, it's a PXI platform that is ideal for meeting the flexibility and performance requirements of semiconductor production tests. 
as well as lowering the cost of tests. But of course, using NI, using PXI as a standardized platform did not mean that NI had to create a system such as the STS. In fact, many of our major customers in a variety of industries have created their own such standard platforms based on PXI. Now, a key innovation that NI has made to the PXI platform is our line of software designed instruments. And the vector signal transceiver was the first of what we called a software designed instrument. Combining the flexibility of a user programmable FPGA with the out of the box experience and performance you would expect from an instrument. All of this based around the Lavurio architecture. In fact, Qualcomm Ethereum saw a 200 times speed improvement when adopting this approach for their characterization benches. And this concept was simply too good to limit down to the 6 gigahertz RF bandwidth we saw in the original VST. So we didn't stop there. In fact, I want to ask Kurt if possibly you could help us unveil the latest wave of our software designed instruments. Thanks, John. A few years ago, we launched an NIPXI signal analyzer that brought RF performance up to 14 gigahertz with industry leading dynamic range. Today, I'm proud to say that we have extended that performance to 26.5 gigahertz. With more than 10 times improvements in real time bandwidth, we now proudly provide the world's widest bandwidth vector signal analyzer. And there is more. This VSA features a user programmable FPGA, making it fully software designed. Wow, that frequency range and that much bandwidth is a huge milestone for PXI. But could you remind the audience why having a user programmable FPGA is so important? Sure. Well, the great thing about being able to program up the FPGA is that the user can extend the instrument's capabilities for new and more innovative measurements. For example, communication network providers and government bodies like Ofcom routinely monitor the radio spectrum to identify any harmful sources of interference. Upon the screen here, you can see a wideband Wi-Fi signal. Now, if you look more closely, you may see an interfering signal phase in and out. It is difficult to isolate the source of this interference using a traditional spectrum analyzer. But this is where a software designed instrument can be repurposed to quickly debug the issue. So using LabVIEW, we download a real-time spectrum analysis personality onto the signal analyzer. Here, we are performing 2 million FFTs per second, overlaying all of the data into a single graph to allow us to monitor the frequency and the intensity over time. What we now see is that the interfering signal is actually a chirp at about 5.5 gigahertz. That's the kind of flexibility we believe customers should demand out of their instruments now and in the future. You mentioned communications networks there. Another industry heavily affected by the wireless evolution is the semiconductor industry. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. The smart mobile revolution has driven requirements for higher performance wireless standards and more integration of features into the same device footprint. This leads to a new set of challenges for semiconductor companies. Your typical design engineer wants the best instrument for increasing RF performance, while production engineers want lower test times. Our new signal analyzer really represents the best of both worlds. Any chance you could give us a demonstration of this? Sure. Here we are testing a 16-bit digital to analog converter, sampling at up to 2.5 giga samples per second, commonly used in wideband communications. This chip is generating signals into our new 26.5 gigahertz signal analyzer. Typical characterization measurements like adjacent channel power ratio or ACPR challenge the performance limits of RF test instruments. But you can see here that our new signal analyzer is able to accurately characterize this high performance digital to analog converter. Of course, with the inherent speed advantages that you get with PXI, you can take the same instrument onto the production floor. Here, we are comparing the time taken to run a sequence of five tests across a number of devices using our signal analyzer. Impressively, our signal analyzer provides performance matching that of a leading boxed analyzer, with measurement speeds nearly 15 times faster. And to top it all off, it also provides access to FPGA for inline signal processing and real-time analysis. So at this point, the compromise between speed and measurement performance is basically gone for microwave frequencies. That's correct, and it comes with multiple advantages. First, 
It's less expensive to buy one instrument for your entire development process. Second, it becomes easy to correlate data between characterization and production. Third, faster test times reduces device cost. This new signal analyzer can literally give you a competitive advantage in the wireless market. That's, that's great. Anything else to talk to show us? Sure. For this digital to analog converter, we also needed to provide a JES, well, a JESD 204B serial protocol, which we implemented using our new 12.5 gigabit per second high speed serial instrument. With eight digital transceiver lines, this new software designed instrument can be used to generate many different protocols. So not only another new instrument, but also a new instrument category outside of RF. Thanks, Kurt. Really impressive. Thanks, John. But we're not done yet. Another popular instrument in the industrial market is the oscilloscope. And we've managed to innovate in that area as well. Ian, perhaps you could help us talk about that too. Yeah, thanks again, John. I'm really happy to show you all today the world's first reconfigurable oscilloscope. When we started out the design process for this new oscilloscope, we wanted to do it from the ground up. You know, most oscilloscopes on the market today work like devices from the 1980s. They take snapshots of signals, they post-process the data, and in the dead time between those snapshots, you can miss triggers, making it harder to debug problems in systems and increasing test times. So we wanted to take a new approach in, this, in designing this new oscilloscope. And just like with the VSA that Kurt just described, we took a user programmable FPGA, programmable in LabVIEW, and put that right in the digital data path, in this instance, just behind the ADC, where it can process every sample in real time continuously. Now, I know a very important feature of a software designed instrument is having the ability to make small changes to the firmware in, not in order to optimize performance or meet specific testing needs. So what have you got in this demonstration to show us? Well, for the demonstration, we've created three pieces of custom IP that we could download to the reconfigurable oscilloscope. We've created a real-time spectrum analyzer for one channel, an NFC decoder and demodulator for another, and a custom analog trigger for a third channel. And because the device has eight channels, we've still got five more free. Well, we don't have time to go through every single one of those, so why don't you just pick your favorite? Okay, well, just about every measurement starts with a trigger, so why don't we go with the custom analog trigger? Put yourselves in the shoes of a designer trying to isolate a, uh, isolate a unique artifact in a signal. So here you can see we're capturing a waveform. We're capturing it using edges, we're capturing a lot of waveforms, and it's triggering quite often. But there seems to be an occasional regularity on the signal. Yeah, there, there is an irregular part to that signal. And the problem is, using an edge trigger, there are edges in the irregular signal and in the good signal. What we need is a more advanced trigger. So using LabVIEW, we've created a custom analog trigger routine that works on signal contours and not edges. We've downloaded that to the user programmable FPGA on the scope. And to get it working, all we need to do is draw boundaries between which the irregular signal will pass. And when the signal passes between those boundaries, the oscilloscope triggers and we capture that waveform. We're doing that custom trigger evaluation in real time with no dead time and no missing samples. That's great. There's some really interesting customizations you've made to your reconfigurable oscilloscope. Now, I'm looking forward to how customers are going to adopt this technology and use it to lower their cost of test. Thanks again, Ian and Kurt. Thanks, John.